Guys and gals, uh, this is a hard hitting one and I, I, this probably applies to everybody because most people watching this have probably been in a situation like this. You're in your car, operating legally. There's a traffic stop. You're legally carrying your firearm and the potential is there for the cop to overreact and violate your rights. And a court, a three judge panel in the appellate court uh, ruled that a Waterbury, Connecticut cop violated this person's rights against unreasonable search and seizure in the fourth, uh, it's, it's the fourth amendment because he lawfully owned a gun. Uh, this is something I want everybody to understand because this has to do with qualified immunity for police. And I believe that cops who do this should be charged. I believe that cops that do this should be held accountable and their qualified immunity removed so that they have to pay the penalties of violating somebody's guaranteed, constitutionally guaranteed rights. Before I go too far down this road, I want to first thank the sponsor of the video, that's CMMG. Guys, CMMG, they make a bunch of tools, different colors, different shapes and sizes. They're in Boonville, Missouri. They're great people. The individuals behind the company are phenomenal. They sue the ATF with their own money. Uh, yeah, they also, uh, CMMG has just released the BR4. Use G&G 10 when you uh, head over there and buy your tools and things that support your tools. Appreciate you, CMMG. Uh, let's get into this one. This is something that should have never happened, and I know it happens every day in this country, which is uncalled for. And <laughs> there are going to be people be like, well, Jared, you were a cop, and you did blah, blah, blah. First, you don't know anything really about me or my career and I gladly locked up a few cops during my career for stuff like this. So, look at this. This is the case, it's uh, in the Second Circuit, U.S. Court of Appeals came out of Connecticut, and it's, uh, I'm gonna screw these names up, Basel Sokena, that is our plaintiff, and the Waterbury cop is Nicholas Andrzejewski, Andrzejewski, sorry if uh, I'm butchering the names, but it is what it is. Here's what the, uh, the three judge panel said. The defendant appellant, that's the cop, uh, an officer with the Waterbury, Connecticut Police Department, appeals from the judgment of the United States District Court for the District of Connecticut, denying in part his motion for summary judgment on the grounds that his purported conduct was not shielded by qualified immunity. The district court said that. He appealed to the Second Circuit U.S. Court of Appeals to try to overrule that, and they agree that he violated this person's rights. That conduct as alleged by the plaintiff appellee, that's the, uh, the victim, Basil Soquena, we're just going to call him the victim here, is that in the course of a routine traffic stop, the cop unlawfully and violently handcuffed and detained the victim in the back of the police cruiser for over a half an hour and conducted a warrantless search of the victim's vehicle after the victim presented a facially valid firearms permit and disclosed that he possessed a firearm pursuant to that permit. On appeal, the cop argues that we should reverse the district court's denial of qualified immunity because the presence of the lawfully owned firearm in the vehicle gave him the requisite probable cause to detain the victim search the interior of his car and search his trunk. So the cop is saying, look, your honor, uh, he had a gun. Even though it was a legal, legally possessed firearm, uh, that gives me the right to violate all his rights, search his car, put him in handcuffs in the back of my cruiser for over half an hour. There's a lot more to this story, but uh, he called back up. About 10 cops showed up, which is a show of force. There's a lot of legalese here. I'm going to use a little bit of uh, de facto arrest. So there are a couple, I think it's four, there are a couple things that a court decides during an encounter with the police whether the person was arrested de facto. That means without the cop having to say, you are under arrest. Uh, it's uh, things like, uh, did the person feel they were free to leave? Uh, this person was handcuffed in the back of a car cruiser for 30 minutes. Uh, a show of force by police. There were 10 that showed up plus the, the one that stopped him. So 11 cops to one uh, victim. That's a show of force where the normal person would would think, hey, you know, I'm, I'm not able to leave this scenario. Another one is how much risk was posed by the person being stopped. And the victim here was compliant. 
Uh, he, there were no furtive movements, meaning movements that put the cop in fear for his life. Uh, he was just compliant. In fact, as you read this case, uh, I'll link it down below if you really want to. So this is how it really happened. Uh, the victim, he was driving through Waterbury, Connecticut, and his GPS on his phone locked up. His phone was mounted in a phone holder, so he wasn't violating law with handheld devices. Uh, so he pulled over to try to get it back to, to go where he knew he was going. If you've ever been to Waterbury, Connecticut, uh, there are a lot of areas in Waterbury, Connecticut that are kind of shady. Uh, this happened to be one of those areas, so the cop used what is used by many a cop. Uh, that this traffic stop happened in an area that was a high crime area. You, you may have heard these if some of you have had uh, dealings with law enforcement. A high crime area known for drugs and prostitution activity. So the cops, a lot of cops, use that as like uh, that's the that's our get out of jail free card, so that we can do whatever we want to this person because this is an area where a lot of people uh, do criminal activity. So this person stopped on his own, wasn't pulled over, stopped to fix his GPS. Cop stops behind him, walks up to the car, demands his driver's license. So the victim gives him his driver's license, doesn't cause a scene, uh, is very compliant then gives him his permit and says, officer, I have a gun in the vehicle and even tells him where it is. It's in the door compartment, driver's door. Now the cop orders him out of the car. Now in just about every state other than communist nations like Massachusetts, uh, constitutional law and case law allows the police to remove somebody from the vehicle uh, for a few reasons. And I'm not gonna get into all the constitutional law behind it. Uh, so he was ordered out of the vehicle the victim says that he was shoved to the ground, he was handcuffed violently, and shoved into the back of the cruiser. He was shoved in a manner that he wasn't sitting, he was actually shoved to his side and partially on the floorboard in the back of the cruiser. And he had to stay that way because he couldn't get up for several minutes until the first responding officer came, the backup, and sat him upright. And when he was sitting upright in the cruiser, he then witnessed the cop that stopped him originally, he got behind him, uh, go into his car and search the car without a warrant and without uh, verbal permission from the, the victim. And then he searched the trunk as well and uh, came back to the cruiser, started to work on his uh, MDT, the mobile data terminal, the, the laptop in the car. Didn't know what he was able to charge uh, the victim with. And uh, when the sergeant came, they saw that, yeah, they, they ran his his name, there were no warrants. They checked on the permit, it was valid. I assume they checked on the gun as well, uh, and it was registered to him, Connecticut registers guns. So they released him. Well, they violated his rights. The Fourth Amendment is free, you're free from unreasonable searches and seizures. There was no warrant. He did not verbally uh, consent to having his vehicle searched. He did absolutely nothing to warrant being handcuffed and detained. Uh, against his will for over 30 minutes. He did nothing to warrant that show of force. He was not a risk to the officer. And the court, to their credit, the district court said it, and then the appellate court, the three-judge panel, said it too, like, you violated his rights. The Fourth Amendment is clearly defined. It's clearly established. Law enforcement knows how they can operate within the case law of that, uh, that amendment of the Constitution. And you clearly went outside that. Thus, you don't get qualified immunity. What does that mean? It can now go back to the district court and whatever that court decides that this gentleman is, uh, is, is entitled to under uh, 42 USC 1983 and 1988 civil rights claims, he's, got it. he's on the hook. Now, the police department, it's usually when uh, defense attorneys sue for law enforcement activity, they do the big pocket theory. They sue the individual cop, They'll sue all uh, responding officers. They'll uh, sue the direct supervisor uh, of that officer. They'll go right up the chain, the chief of police, then the mayor uh, or town administrator, uh, whoever they can get in that bubble, then the city or town as well. And uh, you know what? I'm glad that the courts have said that this cat is operating outside of his legal justification and is on the hook personally. So that means that the taxpayers aren't going to, you know, foot the bill for whatever the courts decide is proper justification. I'm going to show you one other quote that I absolutely loved from reading this case yesterday. 
and this is something that should make you smile. For those reasons, and on this record, the cop did not have probable cause to handcuff and detain the victim in his police cruiser for at least a half an hour based on the victim's disclosure of a gun and a facially valid permit, and thus he violated his Fourth Amendment right to be free from unreasonable and warrantless arrests and detention. And then the cop, in his defense, was like, hey, you know, uh, Your Honor, anytime we see a gun, uh, we should be able to just uh, think, per se, that it's illegal. We should be able to do things because we fear for our safety. And the court said, and I'm paraphrasing, but the court said this. To find otherwise would consign those validly carrying firearms pursuant to a license to automatic detention because it would effectively presume that gun permits are invalid until proven valid or that lawfully owned guns are per se contraband until proven otherwise. Such a finding would effectively render armed individuals' Fourth Amendment rights meaningless when they are lawfully carrying firearms. And those are powerful words from a judge. You don't get to do whatever you want because a free American is exercising their Second Amendment right. And this is a huge ruling in this case. One that I think uh, probably, probably gets violated a lot more than, than should, I mean, it should never get violated, right? But this happens more than people realize. And with all of the illegal violations that these politicians are trying to impose on us, trying to delete parts of the Constitution because they have this strongly worded bill based off of feelings, uh, none of it gets enforced unless cops like this enforce it or cops like this uh, violate the rights of the American citizens that they took an oath to defend. That the guys and gals on the job who were doing it for the right reasons and did so throughout their whole career, people take it very serious when other cops violate their oath. And more people on the job need to root out these sons of bitches for violating their rights because they think they have great creative writing skills. They think that they can verbally bullshit their way around violating people's rights because the ends uh, meet the, the, what they're going to do, like the ends means theory, like whatever happens, whatever they can find in that car, they'll be able to justify, but they can't get it there legally. It's the fruit of the poisonous tree. Like, the second he handcuffed him and threw him in the back of the cruiser, he violated his Fourth Amendment, right? And illegally arrested him. He arrested him without probable cause. The guy did nothing wrong. There were no violations of law. He didn't catch him doing a traffic uh, infraction. He was pulled over to fix his GPS. So everything after that point is illegal too. It's the fruit of the poisonous tree doctrine. So I'm glad this cop was held responsible. No qualified immunity for you. And if you're on the job, this message is for you. Do the frickin' job the right way. Protect the people you're supposed to protect. You're not beholden to the pieces of trash that wear suits for a living, including chiefs of police. Guys and gals, I appreciate each and every one of you. Share this video far and wide. Just because they wear a badge doesn't mean they're doing the right thing at the right time.